Today is a really exciting day for me and hopefully for you too because I've got the new SRAM GX Eagle Access here. Now, it only actually feels a few weeks ago that Neil was bolting that brand new XX transmission onto his bike. But I've got to say, this is the one that really excites me because it's a better price point and it's got loads of great features that I want to find out about myself for the first time when I unbox this and put it on my bike and we're going to walk you through it. Okay, so my aim in this video is to unbox this and put it straight on a bike, show you how easy it is because I've not done this before and SRAM, so it's the easiest thing ever. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, so this is the full group set in here, as far as I know, uh, which retails for £1,180. The full breakdown will be later in the video, uh, but let's get to the good stuff, right? So you've got some decals there. You've got the T-Type chain, of course. That's that brand new design on there. Oh, there it is. There's the derailleur, so we're going to have a close-up look at this in a second. You've got the cranks. So these are those new dub cranks. They've got the replaceable and removable, independently as well, uh, composite taco bash guards. The eight bolt design, which is a bit different from the old three bolt design. That means you can fit a power meter, if that's your fancy on there. Oh, the pod. Now, the shifting pod, this is a bit different. That's a lot bigger than I thought it was, actually, and for what I've seen in the pictures. Not sure how I feel about that because the original one that had the little paddle on it, that took a lot to get used to, to be fair. And then they brought out the rocker paddle. Now I've been running the rocker paddle with my shifting sort of flipped the opposite way. So the lower paddle shifts into the lower gears and the higher paddle shifts back down. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about that, but we'll get it on and we'll see. And then there's the T-Type cassette. It's got the red gear setup profile on there, the X-Sync profile that they say you can shift under full load on this. I mean, I know how Neil shifts, he only ever shifts under full load, so if he says it works, then it definitely works. Okay, well, uh, that's about all we need to know. Although, that said, curiosity killed the cat. So they say that it's got removable parts, you can take it apart. Let's have a quick look, shall we, before we put it on. Okay, so this is it, and I've got to say, I'm really excited about this. Now, it's quite a lot different, actually, from the one that's already on Neil's bike and you've already seen on the market. The most obvious thing, other than the fact it's not got those big polished aluminium plates on there, is battery placement's completely different. Uh, I see this as a positive. So they've reconfigured the gearbox in here, it's positioned further forwards and lower, enabling you to put the battery in here, which that makes common sense to me. That's great having that position on there. Now you've got the replaceable outer links, replaceable skid plates on here. You've obviously got the fitting system here. And then you've got the lower cage, of course, which literally just undoes like this. Absolute genius. You've got your clutch fitting on there. Now this lower cage is actually made from steel. So arguably you could say if you had the XXSL, you could fit one of these, which you can buy aftermarket and toughen it up a bit for like enduro racing. Or you could go the other way. You could have the GX mech and you could fit the XXSL lower cage, which is extremely light. Uh, but let's whack this apart quickly. Okay, so you've got the, the key setting here. In fact, I think I can take this out by hand, yep. So that activates the clutch, but also that does the setup on there. That's quite cool, the fact that it just comes straight out. Now, what have we got here? Let's take this skid plate out then. So this is smart because these are the parts of the mech that you do actually bash. And you can see from my old mech, just a few scuffs and scars on it. I mean, I've been pretty nice to this one, to be fair, but you're still gonna get those just skipping past rocks and bits and pieces on the trail, and even when you crash. So, if I undo this, in theory, the outer plate, there we go. So the outer plate comes straight out, so that's replaceable, which is great. This one is the lowest skid plate, so that comes off. And then, I think if I undo this one in here, the other part comes off as well. And this one just clips off. So they're your, they're your skid plates that take a lot of the brunt as you pass past things. The outer link's replaceable as well. And obviously you get full access to, to get in there as well. That's awesome. So you can also take the entire top part off as well.
Okay, so bottom bracket and crank arm in place. Next thing is to get the chain to the correct length. Now, something quite cool and quite exclusive about the Access setup, there's a couple of ways you can do this. There's the app, but I'm just gonna show you on a desktop for now. You go on to access.sram.com, you put your bike brand in, you put your model in, you put your frame size, and on my one, you put the position of your linkage, so high, and the chambering size that's on there, which is a 32, and I click here, and it's gonna tell me I need to put the rear derailleur in setup position B, so I'll show you that. And my chain length needs to be 116 links, and my setup cog is number 21 tooth on the cassette. This is actually so simple it feels wrong. So at this stage, if you've got bagginess in your chain, it's about adjusting the height of the upper guide wheel. In this case, because there's no B-screw for it, all you do, literally, you take that tension out by yourself, make sure that the two lines line up at the back here, tighten against it, and then you release it and you're good. <laughs> you're good to go, basically. God, it jumps up so fast. That's actually ridiculous. No adjustment needed. That's actually ridiculous how quick and simple that is. Literally just using an app and then what I showed you on a desktop just to figure out the chain length. No messing around at all. Uh, one thing to say actually that's the same with this as it is with any access is the micro adjustment. I've not needed to do it on this, but if you do need to do it, you hold down the set lever basically and you can either adjust in or out or up and down uh, with the corresponding actions on the pod there. And it adjusts, I think it's 0.2 of a millimeter each time. And it's not for each individual one, it's for up or for down. So you can just fine tune in the same way that you use a barrel adjuster really to get the optimum gear, but that's fine. <laughs> right, let's uh, hit the woods, I think, get changed and go and try it out. I'm well excited. <laughs> Okay, initial thoughts. Well, I've um, been making a few notes as we go around, and also I've taken some notes from Neil's video when he first rode this new Access Eagle setup with the XX setup. So firstly, what I noticed in the work stand was the shifting was clean and smooth, but I didn't think it felt quite as fast as the old style Access that I took off this bike beforehand. But as soon as you get it on the trail, this is the interesting thing. As soon as you're actually putting load through that cassette, it physically does pull the chain up and down. It's quite astonishing how fast it actually changes when you don't think it does that quickly. So a good example of this is if you're just pedaling along a fire road and you rapidly tap the buttons. there can be a little bit of a delay before it changes, but that's because it waits for the optimal part of the cassette before it to hop up. That's the X-Sync system. And I've got to say, I'm, I'm really impressed, especially under load. Now, I've been, you could say, a bit of an idiot, deliberately trying to sort of wreck it by going through the gears as hard as possible, changing gears at the most inappropriate times. But it seems the more you do that, the better it actually performs. So as a result, through that twisty section, we were just riding back there. I was covering my thumb on the, the new pod, which, I didn't think I was going to like it, but actually I think I, I might prefer that to the old system. Quite surprised actually how I find that new, the new pod. It means I can just keep my 
done where I need it the entire time actually for changing gear. And because I don't have to worry about sort of easing up when pedaling as you sort of naturally do with regular gears, uh, because you can change at any time, I'm changing gear much more often. And there's uh, hopefully some clips to reflect the fact I'm literally changing the whole time in that really tight Nadri section that all too often riding something like that, you end up in a gear that's a bit too hard or you've overcooked a, a tight turn and you have to grab a load of gears and you crunch through, no crunching at all. And I've got to say, I never thought with the old system that the battery was vulnerable at the back. I've never had a problem. I've crashed a few times, not lost a battery. I do appreciate the fact that in pack racing like cross country, you can have people's wheels all around the place and perhaps it might be a hazard, but having a battery here just feels so much more secure. That just feels a no brainer to me. And uh, the last thing to pick up on as well is on the top end ones like the XXSL, you have the magic wheel pulleys. Now, you don't get that on these, but it's part of the price saving and it's perfectly robust and does the job. I'll tell you what, the changing gear under load is unreal. I'm in my lowest gear now. I'm deliberately gonna change into higher gears with little care. Literally, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it just doesn't seem to matter. So I'm familiar with changing gear under load normally where you'd have to ease up, but like I'm doing this under full load. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> And just a line on compatibility, I guess you could argue this is the only downside of this new system with a T-Type. It's not backwards compatible, so you will need all of this componentry. Uh, you can't sort of chop and change between old access and new. Now you can use the new T-Type chainring on the old Eagle, but not the other way around. Okay, just wanna have a quick recap on a few of the important things now. So obviously everyone's gonna to wanna to know really the main thing here, the price of the actual mech and the price of the cassette. So the mech is 430 pounds uh, and the cassette is 270 pounds. So uh, full pricing of the entire group set is on screen now. And if you to get the whole lot with pod, cranks, bottom bracket, chain, cassette, uh, battery and derailleur, you're looking at 1,180 pounds for the full GX Eagle Access system. I mean, it's funny looking at the the existing GX access stuff, which, I mean, this is heavily worn and heavily abused, but it still works absolutely fine. Um, you know, when I was using this, I've never been conscious of the fact that battery is on the back. It's never been a problem for me, but I imagine if you're a racer, um, it might be a concern. And they've addressed that with the sort of the movement of the motor, which is sort of slimline and pushed it down and put the battery on the top. And if I was a racer, actually the setup I'd probably go for um, obviously you'd probably want to go a little bit lighter than some of the components on it. You might want to go for like the XX SL cranks or whatever, but I'd be tempted to run the GX mech, you know, because of that battery placement. I think that is absolutely brilliant. Shifting performance is exactly the same as the top end. Sure, things are a little bit heavier to keep things durable, but that would be the one. And if, if weight was a problem, change the lower cage, get the magic pulleys and the, the SL lower cage on there, and that'd be just the ticket. But, um, a couple last things to pick up on really about the system. Yes, uh, you know everything about the mounting system on here. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Yes, it's there to help protect the frame. Yes, it's there to help protect the derailleur, but functionally it's just a better setup because you get perfect shifting. Like you're not gonna get any vagueness that you do get with conventional derailleur hangers. Uh, I, I think that in itself is amazing. But the shifting under load, that really does change a lot of things. So you might have noticed I was only able to change a single gear at a time. That's because at time, uh, this was before the embargoed release of this product, the derailleur doesn't exist on the app. Um, so you can't exist it as an ecosystem and change the shifting to multi-shift or flip it. So I will be playing with that in the coming weeks. So feel free to drop us a question uh, for an Ask GMBN Tech or maybe comment on one of the shows and we'll pick it up in there in due course. But something I do really need to emphasize is just how well you can change gear under power. You don't need to dump gears anymore because you can change gear whenever you want. And actually, 
What I really noticed on a particular steep climb today when changing gears deliberately awkwardly was it actually reminded me of how easy e-bikes climb. Like, don't get me wrong, the bike didn't suddenly develop a motor and make itself easier to climb. But the fact that you're not having to think about things like slowing down and then preparing to change gear and lunge up an item, you don't have to worry. You literally just pedal, pull up, get over it, change gear as you're pedaling. It doesn't matter anymore. That is incredible. Uh, well, there we go. That is uh, the GX Eagle Access. I'd love to know what you think of the system. Do you like the pods? Do you not? Do you like the crash? Do you like the taco bash guards? What do you think of the look of the derailleur with the battery up on the top there? Is this one going to be the one that really breaks it for everyone? I reckon it will be. Let us know what you reckon in the comments down there. And don't forget, if you have any more questions about it, let us know down there. And I'm going to carry on riding it and getting to know it. See you later.